said, listen, I don't got time. We got eight other kids to take care of. Yeah. So you get in fights, you get arrested, you're sitting in jail. This guy's done 539 fitness covers. <laughs> what is it that's like this world-class mindset you hold? I want to be the, the number one guy. I guess I want people to live what I've lived. Be a freaking superhero for your whole life. I started lifting at eight years old. By the time I was 17, I was already in the magazines. Wow. So I was already competing against men by 17 because my dad says, enough of the kid stuff. So I want you to think about this. He's starting lifting when he's eight or nine, but he's on stage with men when he's 17. And this man has been able to continue to compete, but not just compete, he's at his peak and dominating into his late 40s. So my mindset is, it's not that I'm doing well for a 49, almost 50 year old guy. Yep. I'm still crushing 20 year old uh, athletes. Love it. Welcome back to Max Out with Ed Milet. I'm so fired up today. I have one of the great fitness icons of all time right here. Yeah, you, big boy. Yeah, you. You can tell from looking at us which one of us is the fitness icon. I'm photoshopped. Yeah. I've been telling everybody today, please photoshop me into this picture so I look at least half his size. But you can tell who's sitting next to me. He doesn't really need an introduction. Four-time Mr. Universe, Titan from American Gladiator. One of the dominant people in the history of bodybuilding. Right there, that is Mike O'Hearn. So, Mike, thanks, thanks, brother. thanks for being thank here, you, man. Thank you, man. So good to have you, man. Thank you. This is beautiful. Let me just say this. Yes. For, for everybody, my fans and everybody, this house is amazing. Um, and <laughs> so you. I hope we do show this through the day. We will. And I just don't bore you. No, you're not going to bore anybody. <laughs> you're more important than the house, but thank you, man, for being here. So everybody knows, well, most people know all of the achievements you've had. When I was reading through Mike's bio to introduce him, I was thinking for a minute, like, how would I even read all these things? So we probably can't cover all of them. But I want to go back before everybody knew you, just for a little okay. bit, okay? Okay. Because you come from a place where it's probably not the most predictable place for someone to become an actor, one of the top bodybuilders of all time. It's not, you know, I doubt it was predictive when you were a kid, right? So tell them where you grew up and how you grew up, because I think this would be interesting for all of you to know this. It's interesting you say that because at the time when I was growing up, mm. I had mentors that were the best in the world. You did? I did. Okay. How um, old are you talking? Nine, 10, oh 11 gosh. years old. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's. I guess you would say I was bred uh, wow. to do this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but I grew up in Kirkland, Washington. Um, I loved it. It's a beautiful place. It is beautiful. Um, Costco, probably because of our family, who was <laughs> <is> there. <laughs> I come from a family of nine. Do you really? So, yeah. Where yeah. are you in the nine? I'm the little one. You're the baby of nine? Yeah. Really? You used to be the. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, no. It's yeah. the, I'm, I'm the baby, and, and that's another thing that helped create something uh, bigger. Because of the fact that, you know, if you got older brothers, you're getting your ass kicked. That's for sure. I had older sisters kicking my ass. <laughs> and so I'm like, wait a minute. I, I, I need to start becoming something. And okay. so uh, our family is very athletic. Okay. Mom and dad, uh, mom was a martial artist. Dad was a football player, bodybuilder. Um, dad bodybuilder too. Yeah, right? yeah. So he's okay. into the weightlifting. The whole family in front of me uh, was weightlifting. And I'm talking about my sisters. No way. Um, doing martial arts, doing all that. Where did these um, mentors come in? Who are they? Like, when that happened? It was uh, shortly, I started lifting at eight years old. Oh, my And I gosh. started competing in uh, martial art tournaments by 11. And my first powerlifting meet, or Olympic lifting meet, was actually at 13. And then powerlifted at 14. And I was already on stage competing in bodybuilding at 14 years old. Oh my and before that, I was already, when I was really little, um, by 9, 10, and 11, I was already running half marathons. And really? so you, I was thrown into this pretty darn young. Pretty early, so you were bred. Do you, yeah. do you believe in, I'm curious about this, I always hear this, this guy's like genetically gifted. Is there such a thing, or is that just like something people who don't train hard say? Uh, it's, there are guys that are genetically gifted. Are you one of them? I would say my family has good genetics. I wouldn't yeah. say we're, we're the most freaky genetics, but I would say this. Yeah. Um, it's the consistency and the work ethic of knowing the little chip on the shoulder or whatever that was mm -hmm. um, and, and growing up with the idea that I wasn't genetic. Okay. Um, Cause I've seen made pictures, me who I am. I mean, I've seen you pictures when you're 18. When you were a big guy already at 18 years old, right? I mean, Those were probably me at 14. Seriously. Yeah. You were already that, because you've been lifting since you were that young. You were already that big at 14. Yeah, and one of those things is uh, don't lift when you're young. 
Yeah. Well, it actually builds bone density and connective tissue. So that's a complete wise yeah, step. Yeah, it's, it's, we've learned so much in 40 years. It's this amazing. It's important because so many of my followers have kids that are athletes that are young right. and they don't lift weights for that reason. I hear this all the time. That's not yeah, true. Yeah, it's, it's not true. Um, yeah. I recommend and... and well, obviously, look at you. What, how tall are you? I'm 6'3". Yeah, so it didn't hurt your growth. No. <laughs> and, and my whole family lifted and they're all tall people. So one thing that I... I think I learned when I was really young is is the continuous building day in and day out because my brothers and sisters were all ahead of me. Okay. And so when I started training, my goal was to beat them, obviously. Yep, first. Um, yeah. It didn't matter if it was martial arts, I didn't want to lose it, powerlifting or bodybuilding, it didn't matter what it was. Mm. Is I wanted to compete, you know, and be better than the next person. So that was bred into you competing right big time when you start. Do you uh, did you want to be a professional bodybuilder? Or was there an age where you went, I want to be a bodybuilder, or I want to be a martial artist? Was there an age that you picked one? Because you're an athlete. You're not. You don't. You're unique because you're not just this kind of. Bo- we were talking about before. You're not just a bodybuilder. Like you, right. we're going to talk about this a little bit later. But like you're an athlete who is a bodybuilder, right? And I know bodybuilders are athletes, but you're an overall athlete. Like even the American Gladiator stuff right. when you're Titan. That, that any, no normal bodybuilder could do that show. You had to be a great athlete to be on that show, right? So did you pick bodybuilding or was it just, you just wanted to compete and you were good at that? It was always athletics first. Okay. <clears throat> and then everything stemmed off of that. So can I power lift and then do it well enough to where it didn't interfere with my athletics? Could I bodybuild? And could I do it well enough to where it didn't interfere with my athletics? Mm-hmm. Because the ultimate goal, I mean, obviously, I grew up with Arnold and Bruce Lee, and I wanted to be a combination of both. Wow. I didn't want to be just Arnold, and I didn't want to be just Bruce Lee. I wanted to be both. I basically wanted to be a superhero, a comic book superhero. And that's kind of what you're known as now. Like, that's literally how people refer to you. That's sort of ironic, (laughs) that you became these things. So there was an age where you're like, I'm going to be somebody. Yeah, I was nine years old. Wow. Yeah. Were your parents that way with you? Did they raise you? No. No. And, And I came from a great family. Um, in a sense of they both worked yeah. and then they both said, listen, we got nine kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to help out. You know, you're going to get paper routes when you're 10, 11, you know, start working. Um, and you're going to be held responsible for your actions. Hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I look back and mostly in today's day and age and yeah. how people are raised and how you have to be a certain way politically correct and stuff. Uh, it's amazing that we're going to lose all that grit. You're so right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's it's, and I know, I'm, we're going off t- yeah. for a second, but just the way people respond to a post tells me how their mind is, True. and 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 when somebody sees something and go, oh, aren't you going to hurt yourself? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. They don't even realize yeah. I've been doing front squats for 40 years, heavy every right. single day, right. and it's like you guys, their minds are so. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, just. Um, Weak? Weak. No, you're right. And they get weaker and weaker. And the same with me when I make posts. I notice the same thing. It's your, you, the way you respond to things is so reflective of your, your mindset, man. I totally buy that. I totally agree with that. So was there a point, like this guy's done 539 fitness covers. <laughs> I mean, just imagine that for a second. He's the most covered person in the history of fitness, of bodybuilding, by far, right? By like a mile. Right behind Arnold. Okay. It's just me and well, Arnold. Well, okay, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> right? Arnold. And, and yeah. his hero, right? So let me ask you this. So was there a turning point? Was there like a point? So you're, you're in Washington. Yep. Okay, what, what was the point? Where did this thing flip for you? When did you start to become you? Uh, was there a first cover? Was there a, a bodybuilding competition? Was there something that happened? Uh, well, I was discovered by Joe Weider. Didn't know that. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I was already competing. Uh, by 14, I was winning shows. Okay. So it wasn't just I was competing, but I was winning. winning. And so I had that mindset of, okay, I'm different than everybody else. Mm. Um, I'm doing something here that nobody else can do, and I'm doing it year, light years in Barely. front of people. Yeah. And so it's funny, it's people, you'll understand this. It's weird. People mm. go, how the heck did you get that big when you were that young? Yeah. Well, at 14, before puberty, yeah. I was 176 pounds on stage. Okay. A year later, I was 272 pounds. Oh and people are like, wait a minute, that's not feasible. It's right. called puberty, guys. Oh my gosh. Everybody had it. Oh my god. But I took advantage of it. Oh my god. So You took advantage of all that growth. All, 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 that of, it. Right. all of it. People right. don't understand that uh, when they see a picture, they go, oh, you've been training for a year. Mm-hmm. I've been training since I was eight. That's amazing, So man. during my puberty years, during that year and year and a half, um, I did gain 100 pounds. And my strength, obviously, it was already strong, but it went through the roof. I was competing. Um, by the time I was 17, I was already in the magazines. Were you really? Yeah. Wow. So I was already competing against men by 17 because my dad says, 
enough of the kid stuff. Wow. He says, compete against the men. And so by mm. 17 years old, I started doing the open shows and open powerlifting meets. You're on stage um, with a 30 year old guy? Yeah. At yeah. 17 years yeah. old. Yeah, at 17 years old, and I was competing in martial arts against the men instead of kids. And it was just one of those things that it's, uh, he suggested, but I'm the one that made the choices. And, I'm, and, and by watching my older brothers and sisters do right things and then wrong things, mm. I kept going baby step. Mm. I can take everybody. Mm. When they make a mistake, that's another day that I get ahead. Mm. Every day that we would go and skip school and go play football, yep. but then they would be drinking beer yep. during the playing football, and yep. I'd be like, I'm playing football. Wow. Yes. I want to do this, and then I want to go home and train. Yep. And it just kept that kind of You've always thing. been this sort of beast monster yeah. training freak. Yeah. So here's what I want you to get about it. The reason I started in the beginning is because this is the most impressive thing about Mike to me, is that he's even more dominant now. Are you 48 or 49? 49. 49 years old. So I want you to think about this. He's on stage, he's starting lifting when he's eight or nine, but he's on stage with men when he's 17. And this man has been able to continue to compete, but not just compete, he's at his peak and dominating into his late 40s. I want you to think about that for just for a second. In any endeavor, I don't care if you're in business, if you're an athlete, if you're in entertainment, to be dominant that late for that long to get better. So I want you to talk to people about what are some of the keys for you in doing that? Because it's incredible, right? Like you're bigger, faster, damn stronger now, it seems, right? So how is that the case? Oh, is it just choices over time? How does someone dominate long term? Because everyone watching this, you've probably had a win or two. You wanted something in business, you won a contest, you were at the top of a board somewhere, you did pretty well in your sport. You're talking about multiple decades of domination, right? So how do you do that? I want to know how you do that. <laughs> it was the idea that I was uh, different and I wanted to prove something and I wanted mm. to be alone. Um, alone. I, I, I you want to be alone because by the way, most people are afraid to be alone. They're really? afraid to, st absolutely. I just want to tell you this because I work with a lot of athletes as you know too, right? The thing they're the most afraid of is being alone. Is standing out, of being alone, of, of being uh, unique. That's a that, so don't, that's not something you should take for granted in yourself. And I don't want no, to interrupt no, you, no, but I, just that phrase, brother. And by the way, just think <laughs> about it, all the guys you've even trained with. How many of because you're the alpha of the alphas, right? Even the dudes you train with, and they won't like this when I say it, but you're the alpha of the alphas. <laughs> no, no, my guys won't right. like that. But most because you're one of the guys, but yeah. you're not. You're not one of the guys. You don't want to be one of the guys. Tiger Woods doesn't want to be one of the guys. That's why I don't everyone on tour like Tiger. Everybody likes Phil. Everybody likes Tiger. Because Tiger doesn't want to be one of the guys. I don't want to be one of the guys in that sense. So you're willing to be alone and you wanted to be alone. I think yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's growing up uh, with dyslexia hmm. and put into special classes. Were you? Yeah. Set me in a different way. Um, hmm. Because in my family, a lot of us in the family grew up with dyslexia, but they handled it well. I didn't. Hmm. That was my chip. Mm. Thought it was a bad thing. Didn't mm. realize later in life yeah. it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Happened and I you. wouldn't even be. Why? Why was it good? Oh my gosh! It it, it goes it, because you grow up with something like that. It already starts building you. You're already in a competition um, with with the world or yourself. Mm. And growing up in special ed, and instantly going, I want the one percent. These people here that are special. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to protect them mm -hmm. against all these bullies. Because it was young. I was young and fighting every day because, mm -hmm. you know, kids. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's like yesterday. It feels like yesterday. Mm -hmm. But you got kids teasing the special kids, mm -hmm. um, special ed kids. All the time. Uh, not special in the sense of like, oh, yeah. God's chosen no, ones. No, 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 no. Um, and now they can use social media to do it to each other, which is even worse. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, but I felt, uh, I felt honored to be able to fight for them and stick up for them. And yeah. if you're teasing the kid in the wheelchair, I'm, I'm hitting you. You're getting you. And but has this chip stuck with you for f 20 years? Some I'm still the 14 year old that walks in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know when people go, how do you get the motivation to go yes. train every day? Yep. I don't have motivation, I got I passion. You have passion? I got passion, I believe this. I need to wake up in the morning and people go, why do you train so early? Tell them what time you train. I train at 4 a.m. I get up at 3 a.m. and I'm in the gym. And this is not something I've done in a year. This is what I've done my whole life. Your whole life? My whole life. We started early because of paper routes. Yeah. You get up early, you do the paper routes, yeah. I'd train, then I'd go to the gym, uh, school. But it was one of, those, one of those things where it set me up and it's still that passion today that I love the fight. Yeah. I love to fight every day and I love the gym and I love going in there with the banter and all that stuff and training with the guys and outlifting them or doing whatever I do, but it's, you've been in a fight. And anybody that's been in a fight, <clears throat> a street fight, mm -hmm. you hear nothing else. Mm -hmm. 
all you're hearing is the hits in the head or you hitting the guy. And there's, mm -hmm. No matter how much they're yelling at you, mm -hmm. you hear nothing. Yeah. And I can get to that place every time I work out. And there's something there. And I'm, I'm like in a fight with myself in that moment. And I love that. And I live off that. That's crazy. Because i got to tell you, whether I've interviewed, it's such a running theme, man. Like athletes I've interviewed, business women I've interviewed. But one of the running themes they all have is they have a way to get themselves, I think I do it myself, but they have a way to get themselves in a state of competing still long term. Like they still find a way to compete. There's something to compete for. I don't care who they are, what their industry is. That's sort of like, there's like like four times already you've referenced either fighting or competing. Like that's a that's in your just yeah, genetic makeup, right? Like that's that, who you That's are. cool to hear that others do that. Bro, it's the, it's the, it's the common line. It's, it's wild yeah. when you meet somebody else that's successful in what they do. Yeah. And, and there's that, the bonds of yeah. what, yeah, that's cool. It's cool. I love the, that. the other thing you have, though, and I want to talk about this next, is the other thing they have that you have in like abundance. Like I train and I'm fit, and we're basically the same age, right? So more than most people, I have a deep appreciation for what it would require to be you, right? Because I don't have that in that realm. I'm fit, but there's a level of dominance that you you've sought and found, right? And so it's little decisions that you make in disciplines, right? So. Talk to them a little bit. Like you mentioned your brothers and sisters drinking. Right. Have you ever had a drink? Never had a drink. Never poured alcohol in his body <laughs> in his life. I mean, just think about this. How about your eating habits, right? Like, just talk to them a little bit about... I don't, I, this I, is annoying, though. This is annoying to people because it's, it's one of those things. It's, you can't beat the guy that never gives up. Yeah. I'm that guy. Yeah, but I'm, I'm the guy that's never missed a meal in 40 years. What do you mean by that? This, honestly, this. honestly. Tell them this. It's annoying to them, but I don't believe I got the greatest genetics. I don't believe I was gifted anything physically I don't better either, than the next the guys. I don't either. What I, don't either. I believe is that I just don't miss meals. It's not something that, I guess the, the only way that you can relate to it is, it blows my mind that people go to work for somebody else from eight in the morning till six at night, night mm -hmm. and that's how they live their lives. And mm -hmm. the only reason I say that is because people say to me, how do you train at four in the morning? How do you go to work for somebody else and right. make them rich? Well, yep. you're just staying average. I don't get it. And for me, I wake up at three in the morning, still today, mm. and I'm excited and I'm like, let's do this. Let's I can go feel crush it. You this. are like when right, we talk, right? it's like, the first time we talked to him, like you need to get in the gym with me, man. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I go early. I go at five. He goes, well, man, we're in at four, and he's like just pumped about it, you know, like, and I'm like, I know that I know what it's like to go to the gym every day. He's done this every day for freaking decades, and he loves it, right? That's the passion play. That's like, the passion, and I. But so if you I mean, can stay like you true. What do you mean you don't miss meals? Like, do you, you mean you I just, don't miss meals? Okay. Do you do you do cheat meals? Do you like do you eat like I saw something on your birthday? It looked like you were like almost pain to eat some bad food. Like it was like a bite of cake <laughs> or something you had. Like you do tell me at least you have some meals that are you're like, this one's not good for me. I get to eat this. Do you at least have some? I do. Mona, if it makes have sense. <laughs> he eats fruit. He eats what? Fruit. 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 That's fruit. the big fruit's my cheat. Fruit. I do cheat. I, I wouldn't say cheap because now today yeah. everybody's like, well, I got my high day on Sundays. Yes. Because it's Sunday? <laughs> Come on, that's what I'm, I'm trying to tell myself. I'm always on a plan. I know, let me, no, no, I'm glad this is you because yeah. I, all my boys are that way. Yeah. And um, there's a little give on things. Mm. Uh, I don't give it unless it's going with what my plan is at the time. Yeah. I'm always getting ready. Mm. Always. And, mm. and I've never not been getting ready. And will they go, well, you don't compete anymore. And I haven't competed. Right. But I get paid to travel to shows. And right. this is one thing I grew up with. When I saw guest posers as a, as a kid, they would show up and they'd be these big um, fat guys <laughs> on stage. <laughs> and, uh, and I'd be like, wait a minute, he doesn't look like the magazine. Mm. What's going on? Mm. And then you do the sport and you, and you yeah. understand there's an off season, there's non season. And I got to a point where I started doing guest appearances and I'm like, I'm going to give him me. Yeah. I want to be me 24 seven. Mm -hmm. um, and I was one of these guys, I'm old enough to be around before Photoshop was created. So yes. it, the cover is the cover. That's the cover. The weights are the weights. There's no yeah. fake weights. Right. You know, it, it's one of those things that I'm too old school to cheat. Yeah, the process. And by the way, process. even though you don't compete anymore, you're still getting covers still. You're still still getting covers, covers right? getting cover do you, stories. Do you, do you, just a couple of quick things. Do you, but what I mean, yeah. I don't compete. Yeah. I don't compete against other people, in a sense. Yeah. I compete every day. I know you do. I do. I know you do. <laughs> and, I've and seen your sessions. I've talked to you about training with you. I damn well know that you <laughs> compete, dude. Trust me. Do you get off Which is more of, fun. I know it's more fun, by the way. I totally agree with you. And I think there's, like, I, 
the reason I love fitness or I love bodybuilding is because I think, or if, uh, UFC fighters I've had on here, it transcends whatever the business is. Like if you're gonna win any business you're in, you're gonna win in your faith, you're gonna win anything, you're gonna have to compete that way. You have to compete to get there, right? So you gotta have that hunger and, and that desire to go, I can do this, yeah. I know I can do this. Um, do you get off on matter. doing stuff? Do you get off on doing stuff other guys won't do? Do you think that's why you eat cleaner, why you train? Is there a party that's like, I'm doing what they're not doing, so. It's got worse. What do you mean? It's got worse, man. This uh, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to my boy. Yeah. And, and it's one of these things where when you're thinking you're giving it all. Yeah. And then somebody goes, ah, and I can do one more percent. Mm. And something triggers you and something fires you up even more. Um, mm. For my entire career, I won the universe. And, yeah. and, and I hate the guys that go, because when I was too young, it was like, well, you can't compete against the men. Mm. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. And then I was at the middle ages and I was beating everybody and mm -hmm. I was still doing the covers and I was still doing powerlifting and going to bodybuilding and doing the martial arts and doing the gladiators. And I was like, Jeez. you guys keep saying you can't do things. Who mm. is this that says you can't? Mm. You can't model for 40 years. I'm still on the covers, so yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. So now at this stage, it's like I, I get too many people and I say, don't change your mindset because when you come up to me and you go, pretty good for 35, right? <laughs> and I'm like, for 35? Mm. Yeah, well, I got mm. achy knees. Why do you have achy knees mm. at 35? What's mm. going on? Mm. So my mindset is, it's not that I'm doing well for a 49, almost 50 year old guy. Yep. I'm still crushing 20 year old uh, athletes. Love it. The elite athletes. Yep. And the point I'm trying to not yell. Yeah. And, and as you hear, yep. I think both of us will go into, uh, uh, yep. the world is becoming an echo. Yeah, you're right. And and I so I'd rather be the guy. I love this. That shuts his mouth and does it. Does it? Yeah. And and, and I live my life uh, with my dogs and, and my girl, and I train at four in the morning, and I, and I don't talk about it so much in the sense of, look at me. Right. I know. I'm doing it. Yeah, you are doing it. And then yeah. if that motivates you, yeah. awesome. My favorite part about you is your example like screams. You don't have to say anything. It's just like so loud, what, like looking at you, watching you train, your example, like it just, it freaking screams, man. So look, you use words like crush, thanks say, compete. Say, <laughs> thanks, like, thanks for that, because it's, it's, it's true. We're around a lot of the guys that are screaming. Oh yeah, both of us are, all and, the time, and, man. And that's what makes you stand out, because you're not, you're not one of these echoes, I'll just tell you. Ask, help someone out here for a minute, yeah. like, because like, you have dominated, but there's people who are like, let's start backwards for a second. They want to get fit. Like, they're like, hey, I'm not training that hard. I am 34 years old. I'm a woman. I'm a man. I, I need to get back. I need to get fit. There's no human on. If I, if I put you in my interview and I didn't ask you this for them, there'll okay. be like malpractice on my part, right? So you have the ultimate fitness health expert probably on the planet sitting next to me. What's like some stuff you just say? Like, hey, man, this is what you got to decide you're going to do if you're going to go get fit. Like some basic things <clears throat> you would say. Basic things. Here's the... Here's, uh... I think they want the pill or, or, yeah. or the one trick. Right. What's the trick? Right. Unfortunately, there's not a trick. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between getting ahead of time mm -hmm. and going along with time. And now I'm sorry for this because uh, they're not going to be happy about some of this. But mm -hmm. I'm going to get to the point where we can all do this. Okay. If you go to the gym and, and you do the cardio and you eat right the day um, and there's no extra plan or push, you're basically just going along with time. Okay. And now what we're doing in the studies we're going to be showing the world mm -hmm. is what I have done is focused on something different. The bone density, which women need to weight lift more than men do. Women need to weight lift more than men more because of bone density. Because of bone density. Okay. And that is health. Okay. Connective tissue. Because connective tissue is, as people say, the farm boy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just grab that bale of hay and throw it up there. Yeah. Um, or people are going to say, well, you got to do extra stuff to keep the testosterone high. Mm -hmm. I've never been high testosterone. Hmm. Reason why I look healthy mm -hmm. or youthful mm -hmm. in right. a sense, because the, the testosterone was never overblown. Wow, okay. If you walk into a gym and think the most muscular guy is the guy on the biggest steroids mm -hmm. and the most muscular, mm -hmm. it's not. He's yeah. not the strongest guy. I'll take a 180 pound wrestler and he this. will toss the sheesh yep, out of a, that's right. a 280 pound buff bodybuilder. Right, yep, absolutely. And that's connective tissue. Okay. That's man strength. Okay. Now that's what keeps you healthy. Okay. Now if you can focus on this and, and train properly to that, mm. 
that is going to allow you to get ahead. Okay. And that is going to get you, the side effects is strength and getting in shape. That's pretty good side effects. Side effects. Right. But you're not focused on this, I guess, visual or, or instant gratification okay. where you're just going to lose it and you can't maintain it. Yes, that's what everybody does. That's, that's all they do. Yeah. And so what I recommend is this. First off is all food is good mm -hmm. if it's controlled. Okay. Okay. You're okay. not going to eat pizza every day and be healthy. Right. Um, but carbs aren't bad. In today's society, carbs are so bad for you. Yeah, right. And it's like, oh, I wish you guys understood what carbs right. would actually do for you. This is good to hear. In a science. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I want you to eat your fats. I want you to eat your carbs. I want you to have your high days or enjoy days because okay. that's mentally okay. something that you got to do or it's a reward. Okay. Because I believe in rewards. I okay. believe in having your, your fun days. Okay. Um, if that helps you get to the next level. Okay. Um, but this is really good for you all to hear it right here. <laughs> They're still going, wait a minute, what's the trick? Yeah. The trick is that you need to pick a goal okay. and you need to step it up a little harder okay. and you need to stay consistent. Yeah, that's the biggest it's, one. Sorry. The, no, 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 it's not, nothing to be sorry about because the... the but it's they, the one step forward, two steps back. I yeah. did great. Mm. You don't get high days until you get to your goal. This is huge. Okay. And, then it's, and, and I got boys in my crew that mm. every weekend is, is their high day. So what, you you get a these, height. You've taken all the steps back. Your progress is completely erased, right? Yeah, unless is, you're getting to the goal. Okay, this is huge. Unless your metabolism slows down. So in the day when I was doing this, mm -hmm. back in the black and white days, before <laughs> TV. Before TV. <laughs> so it, it was one of these things is if your metabolism slows down, that's when you bump up your calories yeah. to feed it again as you're dieting down. Mm -hmm. Um, and then somewhere in society that translated to every Sunday. Yeah, so <laughs> I did. It moved every Sunday. And then it's like now she was one meal a day type thing. No, you're totally right, right. about that. So it, it, that's, yeah. the, that's the only thing that I think people don't, they don't want to hear that it's consistency okay. and it's really on yourself and it's really just doing it. You don't need to be what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm trying to now prove yeah. something to myself that you can do this and you can not just do it at a, hey, I'm pretty good. Right. I hate the... I'm pretty good for this age. Right, right. I hate that. Me too. Go crush them. Crush them. I don't care. I purposely put myself in, in battles with, uh, especially right now with the football season off. I got all the guys yeah. coming in for combines or going back to play. Yep. And the whole purpose isn't really to work out. Mm -hmm. It's to out rep, out beat, out speed, all of them. All of them. Those guys now that are 22 years yeah. old, you're going to thunder them. Prime. You're and, thunder and them. it's. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's say no. that. So that was for the basic athlete, but there's a lot of people who follow me who are elite athletes, who are in the training business. And I was telling you before we went on, just for me even watching Mike train a little bit, and I've been training for 25 years, there's little things that you teach that I've noticed that I do wrong, that I didn't know I did wrong. Little tiny things, right? That where my elbows are placed when I'm doing an incline, just small things like that. The speed in which I do my repetitions, right? Or don't do them. And so you teach this sort of concept called like power bodybuilding is that sort of right and yeah because there's a bunch of, out of sh the guys that don't look great that are super strong right there's a bunch of guys people and ladies who look great who aren't strong aren't strong right and right. so for the elite athlete for the the person who is a bodybuilder or is a golfer or is a, is a fitness type person what, what would you say to them like if you're gonna compete and crush people at your level and beyond here's one thing here's a mindset here's a tool there if you're going into a gym and you're moving uh, the bench press and you're just going back and forth or, or the curls, you can actually do this and do this year after year and still not develop anything. I see these guys all the time. You go to a gym, yep. anybody goes to a gym and yep. you go back a year later, everybody pretty, pretty much looks, looks the, the same. same. That's exactly right. So what's going on yes. that they're not changing? Yes, yes. It's the way you do something. Okay. Um, and That's understand stupid. the purpose. If you are a pro athlete and you're getting ready for the combines, there's a portion of time where you need to slow things down. Move through it slowly. When you're starting to test, you speed up the motions. Okay. But that's for a certain sport. Okay. Um, for me, if I bring in a power lifter to train with me and I slow him down to where it's pauses and holds, mm. um, it completely destroys him. He gets weaker. Yep. Or you take a bodybuilder and you pull him in, mm. now it's just too heavy a too weight heavy. and you can't do that. Yep. Something I do is I go as heavy as I possibly can for the rep range I'm doing. So people go, well, you always lift heavy. Yes. Mm. So is that five reps? No. Dude, we get in a battle. We'll go one rep or we'll go 100 reps. Mm. I train with some Irish guys that just don't know the word quit. Mm. So it's, it's one of these things. It's, it's, mm. it's as heavy as you're doing for the, the range of reps you're doing. Yep. But it's speed. It's all that. And mm. it's range of motions. 
people are so uh, proper squat. Mm -hmm. There's a proper squat, mm -hmm. and there is, and I agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing that for 10 years, and you never do anything where you're leaning forward, you're pulling your feet in, you're pushing your feet out a little further, mm -hmm. you're changing the form, mm -hmm. what are you actually doing? I wonder that myself. Yeah, I've always So you'll that. see us, and we will change forms. We'll change, here's the tricep extension. We'll go here, Really. we'll pull it out here, we'll bring it back here, and change it all the way around. Okay. Squats are proper here, but we'll pull it inside. I love this. We'll put the pressure over the knee. Now, understand the weight is sure. different for sure. everything you're doing. Sure. Yeah. I'm not gonna do a 700 pound squat with right. my knees right. bending right. over. Right. But I will do a three, four hundred yeah. for me. Right. Yeah. Don't everybody do three or four hundred. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's the point of putting yourself in a weak position and so still great. developing it's it great. because everybody's like, ah, my yep. shoulders are strong and I, yep. they're great. Yep. I'm going to train those twice a week. Yep. Yep. I don't like training legs. Oh, but you're skipping something so much more important. Yep. Yep. You're now you're trying to develop a body, but you're forgetting the whole mm. skeleton. Mm. Okay. This, so these are the concepts of, of this power is, body This building. is huge. That's, I love this. You just gave me permission to change things because what I do, is I, I do it the same way all the time for that reason. I don't vary my spacing or anything like that. That's really a Which big is deal. tougher to do now because if you post something that's incorrect that's what I get. on social media, you're, right. you're, you're doing suddenly it wrong. You're, you're doing that wrong. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, good. I feel much better about that. Do you, that. man? We're, we're good over here. It's so good. All right, let's, let's go a couple more things here. Like, yeah. This is so valuable for people because they're in the mindset of a champion because well, I think one of the words I'd use for you is obsessed. And I think yep. your obsessions become your possessions. I think you were obsessed with becoming this version of you. I just believe that. I think at some age there, whether it was 8, 9, 17, or whatever, you became obsessed with being this person that you've become, right? And so now you possess him. And now you're in this hunt to improve him even more, right? I like that. Just cut that clip for me. Right? It, it's actually a fact, though, man. I love it's that. like, it's very, very true. So you've also transcended multiple industries, though. So it's not like you just did one thing, right? right. So you did American Gladiator, right? He's only got to do both programs of American Gladiator. He's been in the fitness business. He's also done well in business. He's owns, he owns different real estate. He's done well in the business world, too. But you also are an actor, right? And yep. so. He's pursuing some things right now. Maybe you'll share with us a little bit, but like they're going to redo Conan, aren't they? Right? They the new are Conan. redoing Conan. And, and Amazon is uh, doing it. Um, and so, so, how are you involved with that? Hopefully, I mean, it's, what, like it's, this is a, this is a, this is an outcome of yours, right? This is a, a goal of yours. Fair to say. This is. Uh, yeah. Oh, acting has always been, and, and like my first movie was Death Becomes Her with Bruce Willis mm -hmm. and Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep, and I actually got felt up by Meryl Streep. That's hot. So it was like. Awesome. Look at those things. Um, <laughs> she grabbed me. Yeah, so right, just politically right, correct. She grabbed right. me. There's no, there's um, no, yeah. But yeah, I've been acting since uh, 1990 and it's something I love. And yes, Gladiator's mm -hmm. the original, but yeah. I was still athletic uh, enough when I got the second Gladiator's. Now here's the funny this thing. This is interesting. Nobody right will know yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, or some, a small percentage will know this. They called me up for the new Gladiator's mm -hmm. and said, hey, you're on the show. And mm -hmm. I go, no, I'm not. Let me try out like everybody else tries out. Mm -hmm. If I deserve it, I deserve it. Uh, um, then I went out, and you can see it online, and, and I destroyed all the tests. And there was really? over 20,000 people tried back out for it. And, you and, and how old were you when the second time? I think uh, it was 2008 came out, so it was 10 years ago. You were 40 years And so old. I came out, and Almost I did 35 pull-ups, and I, I ran a 4740. <laughs> and so it was one of those things. I, what did not, you weigh when you ran a 4745? Come on, man. <laughs> so it was one of those things. I didn't want to just get something handed. I wanted to fight yeah. for this. And yeah. I, there it is again. And I love there the fight. There it is again. There's I love fight. the fight. Two more. Yeah. So There's a running theme here, though. This is good. OK. So th those are great, but um, I've been doing some fun shows like Workaholics and Sunny in Philadelphia and Guest Spots. and. Day uh, daytime TV and soap operas, and so now we're up for uh, He-Man and the remaking Conan. So huge. the crazy hair is that's huge, fitting bro. right now. That's so huge. I'm excited so, for you. Bro. I'm hoping. I'm excited this is, for you. But it's fun. It's a fun battle, and and regardless of what, it, it, when I tell people, they go, "What keeps you motivated?" And I try to say, well, "I know what keeps me motivated. It won't make them motivated, but." If you're passionate about something, and I don't care how small it is, mm -hmm. to you it might be something big. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you something so minute to most people, but yeah. it was so big to me. Um, that uh, you will continue to work out, you will continue to eat right, you will continue to go and make right choices about things. Um, and, and push you beyond any limit that you possibly think is possible. Mm -hmm. You'll get up every morning going, I don't wanna work out today. You'll be up going, no, I got that. Okay. That thing is right in your frontal lobe and, and, and you're passionate about it. And that's mm. what's going to keep you training and dieting right. Mm. So um, I got a, a, a puppy, yeah. 18 years old. And, yeah. and, and this is there's, there's 
<clears throat> it's a, a, a huge part of me because of the fact that not only is, is she my dog, my first adult dog, and she's 18. Um, Your whole face just changed. Yeah, I know, man. I'm going <laughs> to cry now. Yeah. <laughs> Instant. Your whole face just um, changed. Uh, uh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's my heart. Yeah. And, and uh, I train harder, and I've trained harder in the last six months to a point where I was better than I ever was when I won the universe. Now, this is 20 years later. I decided to get in the best shape of my life. So what triggered it? What was yeah, different? Right. Maybe mature muscle can, in my mm -hmm. consistency, but there had to be something that drove me to a different level. Yeah. I'm pretty obsessed as is. Yeah. I was beyond obsessed. Was it Christmas that I fasted? So as everybody else is going through Christmas and New Year's, my goal was New Year's. I want to look better than I've ever looked in my life. Okay. And the only passion I had is that I'm losing my puppy and that I wanted to spend time with her and I want to be able to hold her and kind of show her, to me, that made sense. Mm -hmm. And it's something I knew to somebody else. Huge. Um, mostly if you have a kid, it should yep. be tenfold. Yep, yep. So mm -hmm. I got in the best shape of my life to the point of where, I don't care if it was Jay Cutler or, or yeah. uh, Kai Green going, what yeah. the heck? Right, yeah. This yeah. shouldn't be done. Yeah, right. What are you doing? Right. How do you look like? Yeah. And so, again, it's a puppy, it's me, mm -hmm. it's, it's motivation, it's passion. Yeah. And, and I got to a place that I've never got in my life, mm -hmm. but it's, I can attach things to me mm -hmm. on goals yeah. that are so much more meaningful and deep. And yeah. it's not a trophy. No, it's what you just did. It's, here's what it is, man. It's the, um, the goal's huge, the passion's huge, and you know, you're a freak, right? You're, there's, there's freaks running around the world. I'd like to think that I'm one of them, right? Like your discipline level's freakish, your competition level. But when you give someone who's already a freak a massive reason attached to their goal, it goes ballistic. It just so you attach a massive, compelling, emotional reason, right? Is this the puppy you're telling me about from the first shoot? Is that the puppy? You're with? Yeah, yeah. So just tell, just so you know, because all these people say all these alpha males. Me and him were talking this beforehand, right? You either get us talking about either our kids or our dogs, and we just melt any man, right? So just tell them why, because that reason's huge, but also how big this dude's heart is. Like, how did you end up with her in the first place? Photo shoot, uh, right. Millennium cover. Uh, so I go to the photo shoot, and it's muscle and fitness. Nothing out of the, you know, mm -hmm. different, except that I was honored to be on mm -hmm. the, the Millennium cover, the 2000, that That's was great. Joe, Joe Weider calls me, goes, out of everybody in the world, you're the guy. How cool. And I'm man. like, dude, this is awesome. Show yeah. up, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. uh, they pull out little two puppies, mm -hmm. and uh, I shoot with the two puppies all day long, and then at the end of the photo shoot, they're like, all right, we're gonna take these pups back to the pound. And I'm like, ah, that, that, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they were actually somebody's puppies yeah. that they brought to the yeah. photo shoot. And, and in the pound, everybody tell them what pound Yeah, I don't did. know if you guys yeah. even know right. what a pound right. is. It's an old term that right. uh, they would keep the dogs for maybe 21 days yeah. and then put the dogs down. And yeah. so uh, when they said that, I was like, no, nah, here, here's uh, some money. And, and I took the puppies home. Yeah, and that's the puppy that he's referring Still to that's to his reason to this day. So, so for everybody that's 18 years old, that dog's been alive as long as that and, so and still with me. Man. And because I think that's an elite <laughs> thing. Like, first off, it shows your heart. Like, one of the things that, like, struck me about you is, like, you're this big, studly dude. Like, you're really just this humble, super sweet, good dude. Like, you kind of talk a lot of smack, but he's, like, this really <laughs> gentle, really kind dude who could just break you in half, right? But <laughs> but what's what you, if you're an elite person out there and you're, you're already doing very well, like, he was already one of the most fit men on the planet. How do you go to that next level, like, that crazy freak level? It's a bigger reason. It's gonna be, because your disciplines are there, your habits are there, your rituals are there, your obsession's already there if you're at that level. The only separator is to have a bigger reason, whether that's another competition, something you're trying to surpass. Usually, big reasons are your dreams or other people or a pet. Those are your bigger reasons. That's what you did. You put that formula together. So, yeah. We're running. I feel like we flew by here, Dude, man. Dude, that was way too fast. We didn't cover anything. We know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna do like three of these. We talked about this before, but let me ask you a yes. question. So, two things to finish. Someone said to you, because I think, like, it's rare that you put someone who's the best on the planet at something in front of you. Like, on the earth spinning right now, and we said, who in the last 25 years, let's say, take that window of time, just that basic window of time, which is a fair window, who's probably the healthiest, fittest person, the icon that sustained it, grown it, and got more fit, and also helped more people get there, too, that he trains with? It would be this human, right, sitting next to me. So, 
what does that, I know we've talked a lot about it, but like if, it's hard to describe yourself. I have a hard time doing it. It's like, I'm not yeah. even sure how I am. You know, I'm just that way, right? But let me ask you something, seriously. What's that mindset like? Like, don't sugarcoat it, no BS, don't be humble. Is it just like you wanna crush everybody? Is it you're trying to chase the best you? Is it just like this stacking of disciplines that's built you into this thing? Like, what is it that's like this world-class mindset you hold? Do you know? Um, I would say it's, it's, I want to be the very, the number one guy. I want people to be able to say, hey, I want to do a Mike O'Hearn. I want to mm. be like Mike O'Hearn mm. when I'm that. Mm. And, and, and that in whatever is, it is. It's just that long period of time. Yeah. And, and it's not just, I don't want you guys to sit there and I, I guess I want people to live what I've lived and, and stop giving the excuses and stop saying, uh, I'm 30 now, it's downhill from here. Mm. That's well, doing I pretty peaked. good. College, I peaked yeah. and then that's that. Yeah. It's like, there's a, there's a thing called science, and, and there's a science will show you what's possible, what's not possible. There is something that's called heart that can break that, and something that can set it apart. And I'm just saying that the one thing that we're doing now, and, and, and I'm lucky enough to be around, is to be around doctors and science and actually doing tests now going, why is, why is it that I got to be able to do this? for such a long period of time and not just as a average Joe, because mm -hmm. everybody's like, as long as I can be healthy, mm -hmm. fuck healthy, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. It's all right. It's Bleep okay. that out, but okay. be a freaking superhero for your whole life. Yes. And then, so I guess for me, it's consistency is me describing myself, mm -hmm. um, but the hunger to be the very number one. Yes, so. yes. What's the next uh, five or 10 years look like for you, do you think? We know what the past looked like. We know what the present looks like. What, but when we're back, we're gonna do more of these. But I'm gonna have you back here in yeah, five years. I think, uh, what do you think? I love the um, purchasing properties and commercial real estate. I okay. love this, and it's something that, again, I think you agree with this. Yeah. You can be around uh, your friends, but you need some elite people that are raising you up. And and I've yes. got that, and I've had yeah. that. Um, in the last 10 years, my life has completely changed to the point of where uh, I'm doing all charity and, and I'm around guys that are better than me yeah, in other me facets. Me and, and they make you stand up and go, listen, this, yeah. this is great yeah. what you're doing, but I need you here. Yes. This is what you need to do. Now yeah. you need to man we up. We all need so, these people in your life. Yeah. And so I, I you know, buy I've more got that. property. You think we, we think we're seeing movies? More, more properties, uh, leads in movies um, and continue to travel the world and talk. Yeah. Um, do you think you'd be even more fit? I do. I, yeah. I, listen, I'm, I'm as much as I got crazy this year, I already yeah. told my girl and I said, I want to even be better than I was for New Year's. I love this, brother. I so, love you. Inspire me. Thanks, man. No, you inspire me. You do. Like, Appreciate you're, you're that. inspiring to me. This is I can that's, see, that's, a, that's a fun. That's a fun love. Oh, is this your ride? Yeah, this is how you're getting home. <laughs> Helicopters coming in, guys. Home. Right over the ocean. Um, yeah, we're going to do more of this. Yeah. This went too fast, but I just something that when you can push somebody that's already at a yep. pinnacle level, yep. that's badass. It is badass, and that's why I try to surround myself with guys like you, and like you just said, that's such a that's part of the formula, everybody, is that you surround yourself with people who do make you better, whatever the industry is, it doesn't even matter. They just make you want to be better by their example, not their yelling and screaming, uh, right? Their example thank you does. Thank saying that. That's a fact. The other thing I want to tell everybody that when you're listening to Mike, there's a uniqueness to him that I want to point out. It's that not only can he do these things, but he can articulate them. That's rare for an athlete. It's rare for a business person to be able to articulate it. The reason I point that out to you is you can get Mike to come speak to your organization. You can have him come talk to your group. He can come do, he can do insp inspirational talks, fitness talks. This is someone that you ought to bring into your company to have speak to you. And he's also somebody that just by following him on social media will alter your life. You, you will have no excuses. You will be inspired, right? You will see one of the great lives being lived, but there's also all this fitness stuff, all this information out there. How would they find you online in order to stay in contact with you? What's the best place? Really easy. Okay. You search uh, Michael Hearn and you find everything. Okay, you find everything. I, I got it governed. He's got it governed. <laughs> but, but, but I like major league YouTube stuff's Michael crazy. Hearn, um, Instagram's ballistic and your website, it's, right? It's going crazy, yeah. yeah but you can get hold of me of any of those ways um something i love and i love today yeah. but we got to do it again okay you got to promise me yeah. and them yeah. you're going to come and train with me oh i'm training with you okay absolutely all right no we're down baby all right and yeah. we're going to go uh skinny dip right now he has been begging for this for like two hours so i'm finally going to let him guys so what <laughs> <laughs> all right i hope you enjoy thank you brother, thank you, brother. so much no, it was, was so good much today. like i too enjoyed much. it so much like and i know it's so much great content for all of you so listen everybody i hope you enjoyed the program today Want to ask you to me one favor? I bring you the best people in the world. 
You tell keep them, talking. Tell you them keep who talking. this is, though, because she's been watching the whole interview. So tell them who this is. This is Stryker. So look at Stryker. This is the most beautiful. Oh, you look you guys, at her uh, eyes. If you do follow me, you'll see that I travel the world with her. Look um, at her. And this this little superstar does more for the world than I do. Look at her, those eyes. My goodness. Those are ocean eyes, by the way. Yeah, just like the ocean. Anyway, I'm glad she was here today. Mona's also been here watching us. And so everybody, do me one favor. Rank and review this podcast when you see it. If you see it, make a comment. And if you're listening to it, give it a review. It'll move up. More people around the world to get access to this information. I hope you enjoyed today. Max out your life, everybody.